Well, howdy, 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 everybody. Teresa here with... Oh, my God. Stop it, Brad Heidi. And the critters. I'm ignoring his ass today. Because, oh, my God. Really? Are you done? When are you going to be done? When? I'm going to... You guys don't believe him. He's being a weirdo. He's not really crying. Or... Oh, are you done? No. The dog doesn't even care. I know. Nobody cares. I know. Nobody does. Why was I doing that anyway? I forgot. <laughs> I don't know. Because I said... <laughs> oh, yeah. You got cranky with me because of things that you tease me about, but I tease you like that, and you get cranky <laughs> with me. Because, okay... I got up late because, you guys, y'all know I don't sleep with a crap. So if I don't sleep with a crap, then I'm going to be up a little later. But ever since we got up and I intended on fully grooming the giant snowger today was on my bucket list. But Brad disability came in, so I had to pay bills. And I've been paying bills, and I ordered groceries, and I orchestrated finishing up the little bit of Christmas shopping that we need to do. And directing you on what to order from Amazon and stuff, if you remember right. Remember? So I've been really busy. And this fool, I say I'm going to groom the giant schnauzer here in a few minutes. He pops off with him wanting to make peanut butter cookies. And then him saying that, boy, those chocolate chip cookies you made sure were good. I plan on making them tomorrow, but now you're not going to get any. Because if you're going to pop off about the cookies, I, I've always planned on, Brad, no, seriously, though, I always plan on making them tomorrow. I believe you. No, but I'm serious. I know. I believe you. I've always planned on making them tomorrow, so, I mean. I believe you. I was just teasing you. Well, I know, but it, it just kind of got me that you act like I hadn't been doing anything all morning. And, oh, no. you know, I... I Finished paying the bills and then paid some extra on some and then went over with you the finances and then we were ordering, you know, groceries and 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 some little bit of Christmas shopping that we needed to finish up. Like we needed to get the dog something for Christmas. We needed to get the cat something for Christmas, you know. And then we're making some gifts that we're sending to some friends, which we're excited about. We're not telling you guys what it is because I know if they watch the channel. So I can't tell you guys. I can't tell you guys till after, I don't know. I guess we can never tell them. No. They'll, no. Open, the, they'll open the... I can't tell you until I know they have their gifts. Then I can tell you guys what we're making. But it's exciting. something we're both going to do. And, yeah, we're excited. But I had to order all the, all the components to it. So um, that's what we've been doing. And But I have been really good. I'm a little too sensitive, I know, but I try really hard to, to to keep my schedule in order. And I was too sore yesterday to groom the big dog because my arms get tired when I'm grooming her. Yeah. There's a lot more to groom. Can you do her beard, though? That's what I was doing. Okay. Yeah. No, they can't see you the way my... No. Okay. <clears throat> well, can you go get that and start it? It's gonna. I mean, it's going to take a while. Her beard is really caked with a lot of, you know... They, they dip their beard and stuff in every time they drink or eat. So it needs to be detangled. And I don't want to have to. She looks too weird when she doesn't have a beard. The the two. There's there's four females in the house. And the only one that is making sure that her. She does not have a mustache and beard would be me. And that's just the way it's going to be. <laughs> but. I have to groom her, and it does make my arms very tired. And also because she wants to lay the whole time. I've been grooming her for eight years now. So, But when I groom her, she's so used to it that she just wants to lay. Well, she's a big dog. And, I mean, I have to manually turn her over because she won't even get up and turn to the other side and stuff. So. Well, how much, if we took her in to have her groomed, what would that cost? hundred bucks? Yes, minimum. Yeah. Minimum. Yeah. And that may not be with a bath. You know, and that, and with that is if I can't get you to spend money on you doing your hair, you know, like, yeah. you know. Probably not going to get me to spend money. Yeah. I don't like to, because to, I know 
how difficult it is like to do human hair and how difficult it is to do most animals. I'm not a professional dog groomer, but in this state, you don't have to be and you don't have to be licensed. Um, and it's just, there's a million different ways like to do a poodle haircut. It depends on what the owner wants, you know, and like that, you can look up any kind of haircut, even for dogs and figure out how to do it, you know. Basically, if you have the basics of hair cutting 101 down, whether it's been for animals or humans. So, um, you know, come on, let's face it. Basically, if you're doing men's haircuts, not a whole lot different than doing your dog. I'm just saying. No, I'm saying, I mean, you know, clippers are clippers. Shaving the head is, is shaving the dog's butt and stuff. I mean, well, I'm not doing a sandwich. I, that came out wrong, bud. You're a little sensitive. I Leave just, me alone today, dude. I'm, I'm going to whip your butt. Ooh, baby. Now you guys heard it. But he just messing with me today. I am. It's not a... I mean, I could do a sanitary on your head. <laughs> you want me to? Um, no. <laughs> you know, sanitary where you do, you know, where they pee and poop and the tail and stuff, you make that... You cut that really short. So when they pee and poop, they don't get the Klingons and they don't get the mess, which creates infections and smells bad and stuff. So, you know, basically like with with uh, jelly bean, it makes it so much easier changing her and stuff. And, you know, so um, we are going to get her spayed, but probably not until the first part of January because I just want to make sure that being it's a Christmas month and stuff, that we have enough money to go through the rest of the month, because, you know, things come up. Brad's got another appointment with the surgeon. I've decided to wait on getting with my doctor. I won't be able to get in to see an orthopedist and before the end of the year, and that was my big push because, you know, I know I've met all my deductible and stuff. So uh, I think the arm is getting better as long as it's not re-injured, not, you know, sudden jarring movements and stuff. I mean, it still hurts like heck. but any kind of arthritis does, let's just face it. So it is what it is. Um, did work, some diamond painting last night. I'm working on finishing up uh, the, the great big grandma, you know, his grandmother. Um, so working on that, kind of redid my room a little bit so I have more room to do more crafts and stuff. Um, like I said, I'm going to groom the giant now to here in a few minutes. So will probably beg him to trade me nights cooking because I can't do both. So, um, and after I get done grooming the dogs, I always need to go in and take a shower because I'm like, I can't go full of hair. And, um, I feel, I think that's about it. Uh, oh, I know what I wanted to talk about. It was something important I wanted to talk about. If you guys find yourself in a boat, and I know there's a few of you guys that do, that you don't really have any family. Maybe you don't have any. Like, I don't have any. Uh, besides Brad. And, you know, his brother and stuff. But, I mean, family I would have brought into the marriage. No. Um, and that's their choice. I will never know why my family has chosen to not interact with me or tell me why or anything. Basically, you know, aunts and, and uncles that are still alive. Uh, you know, I will never know why our children have chosen to not interact with us, not ever have time for us, n never to give a moment of care. You know, I've reached out to both of our children for the last time. I'm not going to do it anymore. Um, because you get nothing back, and if they can't care to even say, hey, hi, mom, you know, hi, dad, how you doing, you know, I even told them their dad was going to have surgery and, and didn't tell them what kind and nothing. They just simply don't care. So when you reach that point, you can either stay stuck in the misery of it, or you can move on. And that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm moving on, and Brad's moving on. Um, we're going to keep the fam little bit of family we have, which I said, like his his brother and sister, 
um, and on and his on his paternal side and his dad, uh, you know. But besides that, I'm just moving on, just like um, if I were adopted and didn't know any of my birth family. Um, in fact, I tell I when I do my paperwork for medical stuff, I put adopted because I don't want to have to sit there and answer a million questions about, you know, is my mother and father still in good health and what conditions do they have? Last time I did that, I had an OBGYN smart off to me about, well, oh, don't you think you should know? And I thought, and she was feeling, I thought, well, biatch, that's not your business and you just, you know, take whatever I tell you. So just to avoid all of that, it's just adopted, you know. And when they ask for emergency contact besides Brad, it's just nobody because there isn't. And that's just the way it is. I mean, I we have a few nephews that that uh, we really care about and, and talk with every so often. But besides that, that's it. Um, but Brad and I both had it. We're just not going to keep being being abused. We've been overly nice, if anything, with our children and tried way too hard. And um, I know a lot of you guys are in that same boat where you're like, you know, you 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 put so much in this and and you know you don't understand why then they never have any time for you they never even inquire if you're alive i haven't talked to my oldest daughter since <clears throat> right before we left wyoming text yes just a little bit but not you know i've tried to she doesn't want to talk on the phone or anything and i that's her prerogative but <clears throat> this is something that's really, really been bothering me and, and causing me a lot of emotional distress. And I go through this every Christmas time, and I'm not going to keep going through this. Yeah. I just, I can't spend the rest of my life this way, you know. So, you know, I'm just going to, you know, it is what it is. And it's not anything I can control. And that's on them. And, you know. And if, if that's the way they want to be, then that's the way it'll be. You know, I have a life to lead to, and I have a right to be around people that do care about me. I have a lot of good friends, and I'm really grateful for that. And that's why I always tell you guys that I, that I cherish you, because I do. A lot of you guys are like family to me. I mean, like Leanne and Kathy and Carol. And so many other people, you guys are like family to me. I mean, you guys are, you know, I talk with Leanne almost every night. And Carol, not as often because she's pretty busy. And Kathy, you know, off and on and stuff. But, you know, it doesn't matter how often. It's just when you do talk, it, it's really wonderful. Now, I'm not, you guys know I'm not one to talk on the phone. I don't really like it. I just, that's the way I am. I'm a weirdo that way. Um, I don't care to talk on the phone, do I? No. You know, <laughs> it's like pulling teeth. Because <laughs> I just don't don't care for it. I will for a short amount of time, but I don't want to be one of these ones that stays on the phone forever. Because to me, it kind of feels like I'm, I'm, I can't do anything else. But I'm talking to you on the phone, especially if, people want to video chat because I can't go do like I like to do a million other things like you guys don't see but over here Brad doing some kind of assorted stuff I normally don't look at him when I'm doing the video because he distracts me are you done with your backflow thingy oh goodness see you guys never know what's going on <laughs> He can't sit still either. He is always. And let's. Uh, what were you, what did, were you supposed to be doing? Can you get a comb out? Out of here? Yeah. Lord. I'm not going in there and getting a dog. No, that's fine. I just refuse. That's fine. Okay? You know? It's. It, it, uh, the beard on the dog, just, yeah. Nixie, tell your dad and then to do your beard, huh? Because you need to have some groomation done. Yes, you're awful long. 
She is very long and shaggy right now. She needs to be groomed, and that way she'll look decent, you know. That'll work. That'd be great. That'd be a great one to keep for her beard. That would be super, because the combs aren't real super tight. Or do you want me to use this little one right there? That one would probably be better, but either one. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's what I get depressed about every year. Okay, yes, you always miss people that have passed on. That's a given. You know, you always miss, like, Grandma, his mom. You know, even though his mom and I had our conflicts, I really did love that woman. She was more like a mother to me than, than anybody else I've ever had, besides my grandmother when I was a child. And, I mean, um, you know, a lot of friends that have passed on that you just find it really hard to believe that they're gone and stuff. But, um, you know, is knowing that, you know, especially I'm going to put you, we moved here because our daughter wanted us to. She was both that made all these problems. She was going to help with her dad and stuff. Knew he was getting worse. At that time, we didn't know if maybe he had Parkinson's or something else. We're still not definitely sure on that. Um, but, and then she just flipped a biscuit six weeks later and, you know, cut us out of her life again. This usually happens every year around Christmas, whatever reason. And that's been a hard blow. Especially when you learn that she's moved since then. We're never even privy to <clears throat> even knowing. And, but like I said, that is her choice. And, um, you can't, you can't mend the fence if you don't have the right tools and the right supplies. And it takes two. So, you know, we're good people. We're very loving and kind and we try to be, um, that way and there's a lot of you guys that love the way we are and um you know i like who i am finally and that's what i think i'm not going to put up with all the crap anymore I, I like who i am i'm a good person i'm not perfect by any means always a work of progress but i like who i am for the most part you know there's a lot of things I want to achieve and stuff. Um, you know, we've been looking at, we don't really want to stay. It's not the problem with the trailer, although we cannot get them to pony up and, and get Wes's on fixing some of the stuff that is faulty, like the roof and, and the floor and stuff. But we'll get that handled. Um, it's... Where, where it's located and who we're having to pay lot rent to. And so, you know, we eventually would like to buy some land and, and either move this or sell it and buy something else. <clears throat> we talked about maybe moving, you know, clear across the country because that's where his family is. But um, I don't know if we have it in us to do a clear a cross country move again. And financially is the biggest thing. Yeah, you can do any kind of a move across the country if you've got money. No. I'm sorry. I'm talking to the dog. I know. <laughs> but um, it's the money factor and stuff. And, and, you know, we were looking at around kind of where <clears throat> some of the towns around where his dad lives Jelly. and stuff. And um, th that's beautiful country. But um, <clears throat> I don't think we really can afford to do such, um, you know, so... We'll find the right place, and there's that saying that you got to, you have to bloom where you are, and that's true. And it's not a bad area or anything. It's, I would like to have some of our own land, yeah. <clears throat> so we could plant some. I would like to have some um, uh, standing garden boxes. They call them. You don't have to bend over and weed and stuff. And that's really nice. That'd be cool. Yeah, and the, I know somebody who could build those. Yeah, and um, fruit trees, where I would like to have a working, a shed to work out of, or a workshop, and then one just to have tools in. Um, I'd like to have a screened-in porch. I mean, things like, we wouldn't mind maybe investigating a hot tub. Um, that could be beneficial for both of us. <clears throat> and um, just, 
you know, some room for our dogs to run and, and had him to have a smoker and a barbecue pit. And, you know, I'd like to have one of them lit fireplace things and those are cool. So, well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say about that. But, um, you guys know I don't normally talk about our children and that's why. Because there is no relationship and, um, for years and years I've begged to have one and basically the only way I could have one is if I was being, they were being rather abusive and I was just basically, you know, at their beck and call all the time for whenever they wanted to babysit. And I, mean, I love my grandkids, and they were a lot of fun when they were younger. Now that they're teenagers, it's, you know, they're they're warfing into what they're going to be as adults. And, and normally teenagers don't really want to hang with their grandparents, and I get that. I was the same way. You know, well, I don't know. I didn't, my grandparents didn't live since we moved two hours away. It was always a big treat whenever I did get to see them, you know. And especially because they had a bone alley, so, you know, you had to go up and bowl, and, and you know, it was a little stomping territory. But, um, you yeah, know, we're just done. We're just, we're not going to keep being abused. Um, I was telling them that normally I've quit that I'm adopted on mm. medical paperwork because, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that way you don't have to sit there. Because that can be painful, too. You have to sit there. And, and first off, you don't want to have to tell all your personal business. And then, you know. You don't want to have to sit there and go, yeah, on this side and this side and this side. Yeah, I know it can help, but, you know, there's all kinds of people that are totally adopted that don't know their medical background. They manage to get along in life. Basically, when you get belong in the tooth, like Brad and I, we already have somewhat of a history going on, you know, medically, so they can just go off of that, you know. If it was something really super important, I probably would say, hey, I do know this on this side. But there isn't anything super significant, I, except for there is lung problems on both sides of my family. I don't like babies. <laughs> well, I get ready to vape. <laughs> but I don't smoke anymore. Yeah. I am very proud of you for that. And there's no nicotine in it. I make it myself. But sometimes when I'm a little stressed out, I go through periods where I don't vape at all, right? Uh -huh. And then I'll go through periods where I do, and then Brad's laughing because if I'm upset about something, I will do what he called dragon vaping. <laughs> where I vape a whole lot, and it's like the whole room is all all filled with this cloud. <laughs> that smells really great, though, and it yeah. dissipates in a minute. But, yeah, I'll just be kind of, you know. That's how hard you're popping on the vape. Yep. Basically, when I first quit smoking, I always had that vape oh. with me 24-7. I had a couple of them. I knew how long one would last before it had to be plugged in. I wouldn't have gotten through otherwise. And still, you know, you watch somebody smoking, and you're like, man, that looks like a good idea. Or sometimes you're stressed out, and you're like, you know, a cigarette sounds really good. And you remember how much it hurts your lungs, how bad it stinks, and all that. And you're like, no, but I could. Babe, and that takes the place of it, and I'm happy with that, and I like the flavors. Like, this is pina colada that I made. And, yeah. Do you have anything to say about the thing about the, the kids and, and just kind of going on our own way? And yeah, and it just, I know for a long time you felt like that you must have been a really bad mother. Mm-hmm. And I know you felt like that. And, you know, I kept trying to tell you that, no, you were a very good mother. It's just, you know, I I don't know what's going on with their uh, mentalness. And, uh, but you, you've taken a lot of grief that you shouldn't have. I was a good mother. I will say that without a doubt. I was not perfect, but I was a good mother. Mm -hmm. I mean, they always came home to a clean house. They came home to really good cooked meals. Usually I was baking cookies at least once a week. I had this deal where if it was a snowy cold day, they knew when they came home and they hit that door, there was going to be hot chocolate that I would make and, you know, like cookies, hot fresh cookies. You know, they knew that. I mean, all their friends loved hanging out at the house and stuff. I was a good mother. He was a good father. 
you know, were we perfect? No. Did we make mistakes? Sure. But that's life. So, anyway, I don't really have anything else to say except for I need to go groom a dog. Right? Yeah. So, will you train me and cook tonight? Because mm -hmm. I'll be busy grooming her. Yeah. Because you know, otherwise I won't have energy to make cookies tomorrow. Which would be very sad. I know, we have to go pick up groceries in the morning. I know. That means we have to try and sleep tonight. Okay. But yeah, <laughs> I'll be glad to It's a travesty, because, oh, Lord, let me tell you guys one more thing. It's very important, okay? If you guys haven't ever tried Coke Zero or Dr. Pepper Zero, oh, my. That is the bomb.com, okay? And a lot of my friends share the same sentiment. I don't know what it is about that Coke Zero over just a regular Diet Coke, but, oh, Lordy, it's just a little sweeter. It's sugar-free, but it is, oh, wonderful. And poor Brad was worried because he feels like he's been drinking a lot of pop lately. And I said to him, you're 61 years old now. For years and years, we hardly ever drank any pop because, you know, it wasn't something you had to buy. And when you're, you know, raising a family and stuff on one income mainly, you know, I mean, I, I worked here and there, and then I also sold, you know, handmade crafts and stuff. But, you know, there were some years that we were just your income. Yep. And so you didn't buy the extra. Or if you did, I would buy it so Brad could have a can a day. I wasn't that big of a, of a thing, a pop thing. I still am not as big mm -hmm. of a lover, but... Then I drink coffee, and he does not. And I drink hot chocolate, and he normally does it. Once in a while, he might have yeah. some. But um, he was worried, feeling like he was drinking too much pop. I'm like, you know, you're 61 years old. And it's all diet anyway. So, you know, if that's the worst thing this man does, then great. I mean, he's had to really restrict his carbs because being diabetic and to drive his A1C down, which is going down... So fast and so wonderful. His numbers are great. That toe that has been open for like seven months now is almost all the way closed. Right. It's looking great. Your surgeon is going to be pleased as pumpkin pie. You know, so like that's the worst thing. But yeah, if you guys haven't tried it, I know you're thinking, what's the difference? I don't know. There is something different. It was like in Wyoming, they had. Pepsi 10 or Dr. Pepper 10. Oh, and this seems to be like the same kind of formula. And, but oh man, it's just, mm, 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 mm. Sometimes, you know, you just got to have you a big old swig of it. Mm -hmm. Just like, mm. <laughs> right, honey? Yeah, well, you know, and I was really good for the longest time about not drinking any kind of pot. And uh, when Me I. Me too. When I went to um, work for Loaf and Jug, it was, it's a C store chain that's uh, Kroger, Kroger owned. And kind of like Circle K yeah, or Sheets or yeah. you know any of those numbers. Yeah, and uh, um, they they had a policy where if you brought your own cup, that you could drink any of the fountain drinks. Mm -hmm. And so I went from maybe having a can of pop one can every two weeks to drinking it constantly and so I got back into it. Was it all sugar free. Yeah, all and but that all also at that point in time is when you didn't realize that you had diabetes and he was constantly thirsty. You guys all know what that's oh, like. So yes. you know now I could tell we was coming home at night because he was just drinking like crazy and he would tell me about how much he was drinking at work. Yes. And then, of course, then he had to be up and, and using the restroom. I'm like, I think you might have, it was a warning sign. It's like, I think you might have diabetes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he went to a doctor, and the doctor's like, I think you have diabetes. Let's do some tests. <laughs> and then it's like, guess what? You have diabetes. <laughs> you are the proud winner of a baby diabetes. <laughs> How would you like it packaged? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I mean, I do feel guilty sometimes if I drink a lot of pop because I know it's not cheap. You know, but I usually buy it on sale. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. We only do diet coke. We don't, we prefer diet coke and that. Well, I mean I, I like the Pepsi too. Yeah. They have Pepsi Zero? Uh huh. 
Yeah, see, but it just seems to be that around here, Diet Coke's usually on sale, well, or Coke products. Nationwide, actually worldwide, Coke outsells Pepsi. Mm -hmm. um, in Wyoming, Honey. in Wyoming, <laughs> Pepsi just completely kicked Coke's butt. And, uh, um, you know, when I was working, oh. when I was working for the grocery store, when we would have Pepsi on ad, we would have to bring in like 60 pallets for the week. Yeah. And uh, when Coke went on ad for the same price, we might bring in four. Wow. So, yeah. So My they, grandparents always were Coke lovers. Yeah. Look at this girl, though. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, and I've gotten to a point where I'm just, I'm not that picky anymore. You know, it's... Well, I don't like the, I don't like the, like, off-brand. No. And I know a lot of people do, and that's great. And we used to drink it for years and years. I mean, I had maybe a can a day, maybe. You know. Look at your little face, though. Do you see her face, Daddy? Yes. Look at this little face, face. She has your oh. number. I have my number. Oh, you're so beautiful. Her come up with me all night long. She just sleeps here in the crook of my neck till I just tuck her, her head down in there. Mm -hmm. And kind of nuzzling my hair, right? You just love to do that, don't you? Well, look how panicky she was last night. We were sitting on your bed watching TV, and you started loving Charlie up. And oh, that was just... Lord. That she would not have. And then yesterday, I was going to go, you know, have lunch with a friend, and this dog acted like I was killing her. Mm -hmm. She was crying. She was frantic. I ended up deciding not to go to lunch. I don't know her too was because she was so heartbroken, man. Uh -huh. She was so heartbroken, but yeah, I was loving up Charlie because <laughs> okay, well, I'll quit talking. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> sometimes if you're messing with one dog, you look out the corner of your eye and you'll see another dog looking a little sad. So then you got to go run over there and love up that dog. Well, that's what happened. But she was not having it, and it's like. She likes to do the kind of running tackle thing anyway to me, and she was not having it, but Charlie was getting his love up on. Oh, yeah. he? he needs to have love up too, okay? And then what she would do, <laughs> Teresa was loving up Charlie, and then she came over to me and climbed up on my chest like, you see what they're doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are we doing now? We're just showing everybody your stuff? Say, look, look, everybody. Right? What? What? Are you a happy girl? Huh? Are you the happiest girl in the whole world? But, I mean, she loves me, but you are just... I am the bomb dog queen. Yes. Right? The sun rises How are you going to feel about me grooming Nixie here in a minute? What? You don't want to talk about it now? Probably not. Oh, don't smack me in the face anymore. <laughs> Why you do that to your mom? Hmm? Why are you doing that to me, huh? Hmm? You want to go see Dad? Not really? Nope. Go see Dad. No? Well, uh, 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 uh. do you want to go see your dad? <laughs> I put him in charge of, of, of getting getting their Christmas gift. I don't. He picked out some kind of treat. I don't even know what it was. I'm sure it'll be great. <laughs> it was, it's a rawhide free chews. Okay, good. Peanut butter flavor. Oh. And all three of our dogs. They love, love peanut, peanut butter. butter. Oh, Lord, this one, she sees the jar, she starts drooling, don't you? You just love yep. the peanut butter. Peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> I got to remember, I am on the video right yes. now, because every time, you know, you say peanut butter, then you got a jelly. You're like, peanut butter and jelly. I told Bryce, if we ever got another dog, I have named peanut butter. Right? No? What? Are you in love with Deva? Are you ready to go see Dad now? No? Okay. No. Don't smack me in the face anymore. Why you do that? Hmm? Are you a good girl? Hmm? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We love you. Okay? I need to go say goodbye to these people and groom your sister, though. Okay? If I don't groom you guys, then how would we be able to afford to have to live in a lap of luxury like you do, girlfriend? Like they're so accustomed to. You are to. so accustomed to living in Lap of luxury like this. <laughs> She's like, wow, mom. Yeah. What? What? Oh, 
what are you do? You guys see what she does with her paws? She's very, very, she uses her paws a lot. She likes to, to pounce on me and always doing the paws, right? And then every time you change your butt, Every time you change your diaper, she got to have the biggest party, and she, like, tries to dig at the bed, and then she's, like, flopping on her back, and she's, you know how dogs are just, and she is just having the ha the, the biggest party ever, right, hon? Yes, she is. Because you have a dry butt. Oh, Lord, last night, about 4 a.m., honey, I was getting ready to go to sleep, and this child here, I got a whiff. She dropped a doopy. Oh, Lord, was it a dookie and a half. <laughs> it was the stinkiest thing ever, girlfriend. And I can't I can't bear to go to sleep and know she's got a dirty butt because, you know, you wouldn't want that on a human child either because, you know, you don't want them to be all uncomfortable and, 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 and get sore and stuff. So mm -hmm. I would change your butt about red gag. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it was that bad, Jelly, wasn't it? It was that bad, and did I get a thank you from you? No, I did not. Sweetie, you got such a way with words. What do you mean? He's... Listening to you. He's a he's a cougar you're, booger. You're loving up on the the dog. Mm -hmm. I love her. I love all our animals. And I didn't think that this little dog was, you know, she's actually helped our marriage because you know you sit there. And no matter how busy you are, when the dog comes in between you, you're going to stop everything. Cause, like right now. See her butt? Woo! <laughs> you're going to come and you're going to stop and pet her. Right, girlfriend? What? 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 Have, what? You, ever, have you ever told them about the first time that Misty let us pet her? Yeah, I did. Okay. So... Anyway, girlfriend, you do need... No, now she don't want to get down. Come on now. I know. <laughs> anyway, it makes you happy. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a great day. Don't get stressed out about Christmas. Like I tell you guys, it's coming whether or not you're stressed out. And, you know, it's not about the gifts you give. It's about the love you get. You know? Exactly. Christmas doesn't have to cost a lot. That's why how I got into doing so many crafts years ago was because we didn't have money for presents and stuff. And that's just how I was kind of raised. And so you make stuff. And, you know, in the olden days, that's what they did. They didn't go out to any store and go buy stuff. You made some. And so that's how I got so good at crafts. And I really love it. And then I started giving people stuff we had bought. And they were disappointed because... Mm -hmm. They were like, oh, because oh, usually you make yeah. us stuff. And it's like, oh, that's something maybe you're tired of that. So, oh. <laughs> anyway, you guys, hang in there. Don't get stressed out. Don't feed into all the negativity. Oh, my Lord, I was on Facebook the other day, and there's so many people being negative. I just, you know, geez. I only got to spend a couple minutes on there, and I'm like, I got to leave because it's just, I know people are really stressed out. This is a hard time of the year, but, you know, being so negative in a public forum doesn't help any. You guys don't, will see me make a few videos where you guys know I'm really down. But for the most part, you guys don't know how down I am because I will, I will appear to be a lot more upbeat because I don't, I, you guys don't need that. You guys don't need... If you're having a bad day, you don't need somebody else being super down, you know, unless it just cannot be helped. Because, you know, we all have our own our own crap to deal with. In some way, some fashion, in your life, you have some craptastic going on. You know, a lot of us just don't talk about it or whatever. I'm just a little more upfront about <clears throat> some stuff. Don't you think? Yes, you are. So, anyway, hang in there. Because, you know, I love you. I can't talk for Brad, but I love you. Me too. And I'm TikTok famous. I will have you all know. I almost have 5,000 followers. What? I've had this channel forever. I think like 10 years, 9 years, something like that. Yeah. And I don't even have 1,000, but over there I got almost 5,000. Well, I, I don't know what's given on there. Don't you have a couple of celebrities that... Oh, look. 
Over on the wall, there's a bug. Yes, there is. It's moving yeah. really slowly. Can you kill it? I will. Oh, yeah, I have a couple celebrities. I can't remember who they are. <laughs> Keneva Reeves, or what's his oh, name? Keanu Reeves. There you go. Him. Oh, I don't know, there's a few other people. I'm like, and then you're looking, it's like, well, it really is them, you know. Pink. She and I are just like BFF now. She consults, asks me, and consults with me before she puts out a video. What do you think about this, Teresa? What do you think about that, Teresa? And I'm like, well, you know, Pink, I was thinking for this video, maybe you could. And then the next one, you will. And she's like, you know what? I don't know how I ever got along without you. Because you're just so phenomenal at this. And I'm like, thank you, I know. But no, I must stay in my current life and stuff because Brad needs me. And the dogs need me. And the cat needs me, even though she's shady. Are you shady, cat? She's getting dementia, I think, seriously. But that's another topic for another day. I've kept you guys way too long. I know you guys got toilets to scrub and some other equally fabulous things to do. Right, Brad Heidi? Right, Teresa Heidi. Okay, love you guys. Talk to you later. Hope you're having a great day. Oh, this is Vlogmas number 10. Say bye, Brad. Bye, Brad. Bye, guys.